Daddy gang, I am here with Josie Consecos, and I, I, I'm going to be honest, I never thought that I would have you on the podcast one because we didn't know each other yeah. really like I feel like I've like seen you on Instagram I'm sure you've seen me on Instagram or you're gonna be like nope I've never seen you in my life no we <laughs> have obviously yeah. cross paths a yeah. couple times seen each other I definitely knew who you were and when yes. you reached out I was like fuck yeah super right down. so random though and so I think I was thinking about it and I'm like just to get right into it daddy gang the first real connection we had on the internet was that your dad DM'd me. Oh my God. I I completely forgot that that happened. And I remember, did you tweet me about it? Or no, just, I think someone maybe else was someone like, did. Okay. they were just like, yeah, get your dad. So my dad does this. Yeah. And it's I think he does. And I, I'm like, please do not do that to friends, people I know, younger girls. Like, Well, and I wanted to first almost actually, this is going to probably throw you off. I actually wanted to apologize to you because I feel like I've had time to think about it and I feel like in the moment I knew he was beefing with Barstool and like I work with Barstool so I when I saw that I my initial reaction was to post it because I'm like oh this creepy dude's in my DMs like what the fuck and then now he was yelling at like Barstool and all these people about the fights and stuff like he kind of you put, himself. Right, right, right. So then I think in that moment, my initial reaction was like, oh, like, um, protect Barstool and like, po- like post it. But as I've now not, I haven't really gotten to know you yet, but like mm-hmm. now knowing who you are also, I wanted to say I'm sorry because I can't imagine being in your position and then like having like we're the similar age and then having to see that like that fucking sucks so now i i'm i wish i could take that back so i just want to say i'm sorry i love that you actually like afterwards you like obviously thought about it in depth and you're like wow like maybe like i don't know how she felt about it could have hurt her yeah it it makes you feel any better it's okay it it didn't I, i honestly like my dad does whatever he wants to do whenever he wants to do it he's a public figure he tweets and does his shit and i don't really have a say in it so at this point i've just kind of been like I take it as it comes, yeah. like, it is what it is, and I don't really get affected by it. But I, but also, like, this has been a thing that he's, like, he doesn't really know um, who's my friend exactly and who isn't because he's Got not, it. like, that well-versed with, like, social media and Instagram. But he DMs. He's, like, DMed a lot of my friends and sent that exact same thing. Come to Vegas. Here's my oh. number, blah, blah, blah. And I'm just, like, father, that is my friend. Like, we're, he's just not around. Like, he's right. not super close, so he doesn't know the people I hang out with all the time. And so but this it, is, like, a thing that a lot of my friends have been like, yo, your dad DM me. And I'm like, I'm so and sorry. And it puts you in such a hard position because you're like, dad, weird. what the like, fuck? He's my father. He's, like, 55, 56 now. I'm just like, dad, these are my girls. are like, 20, 21. I... Well, I think I was thinking about it because I'm like, people may be like, wait, who, what the fuck? What's going on? Like, if they don't know you, if they don't know your dad, I think it's good for us to kind of just like go all the way back to the beginning okay. and kind of just start with like where you're from, who you are. And obviously, like your dad is a part of your life and like why at yeah. first you were like, quote unquote, known. And obviously mm-hmm. now you're so much more than just Jose Canseco's daughter, Thanks. way more than that. But kind of can you bring us through like your childhood and like I have talked so much on this podcast <laughs> about dating professional athletes Josie and it has been like I've seen but I actually saw because I've obviously did my did yes, my homework yes. did some ta- watched my tapes yep um you have nicknames for them yes which I'm obsessed yes, with I was yes. like if you refer to anyone like we can give them like little nicknames we like, can come up chill. with nicknames for you today because Josie we doesn't want to talk maybe. like straight names which I totally respect nah, we're I'd just talking about not, Josie yeah. we're talking about Josie today yeah. but um so I've I've talked about dating professional athletes and I was sitting here and I'm like wow like this is going to be such an interesting interview because I'm sitting with someone right now that is not isn't dating professional athletes but is the daughter of one yeah. and, and i've seen his dating life and how athletes perceive girlfriends relationships and yes doesn't so, seem great right help it's me. not it's not okay <laughs> so can you kind of explain like growing up as the, in that position like walk us through what that was like so my parents split very young. Okay. Um, I don't know how far back you want me to go. I guess. So, just, like, yeah, watching, was, so no, my parents so split super young. My mom, they uh, met at a Hooters. It was oh. my mom's first day working at Hooters. And she like just got a little boob job. And she was oh. so excited. And the first day at work, she met my dad. Pretty much fell in love instantly. And he like took her up out of Cleveland, Ohio. Got it. Um, but yeah, they met. And they were together. Fell in love. Got pregnant. Got married. And then they were only together for a couple years. Because I think there was a certain level of like toxicity yeah. and unfaithfulness between both of them i think my dad kind of initiated i mean he was an athlete on the road yeah. like back in the day uh that era of baseball and like his level of success was like massive it was right. like really put baseball on the map as a sport and and yeah and they just like kind of split and then i was raised in la with my mom okay 
single mom just kind of raised me your whole life me and her that's like my rock my mom's like my best friend on the planet she's like the best person ever and my dad um just kind of always like so he retired or not retired he got kind of like blackballed because i don't for anyone who doesn't know took steroids and like got uh got cut out for it got kicked out of baseball and then wrote a book and kind of like snitched on people but it was actually like the truth and so my whole childhood with him he was just kind of always since he stopped playing baseball like kind of abruptly he just always kind of had to chase the next opportunity for money and success because he went from being the highest paid athlete in the world to having nothing like I've seen my dad at a point having like you know twenty dollars to his name not knowing like his next meal and stuff and like he's really been through a journey um that's already interesting too because I feel like naturally just to be honest I think anyone would perceive you as being not like I feel like people look at you and probably like oh she has it so easy like that her whole life is paid for rich Rich. everyone thinks I'm just like rich and Canseco's daughter you have so much money this and that I'm like little do they know like that is so not not the case so at all so your parents split up um how okay so you're getting you're raised by your mother what was your relationship then with like your dad like was he in your life so he tried to be here and there like he lived in LA for I'd say maybe like four or five years total throughout my entire life to date oh, wow. ever since then he's lived elsewhere he's been uh playing softball like playing baseball like little league kind of like whatever he can get his hands on to play and make money he would do that and a lot of the time that meant not being around me unfortunately right. but i you know what i mean he had to he had to make money he had to do something so i kind of res- you know i have to give him a little bit of respect for like hustling totally but he wasn't around really ever you know? so basically for everyone listening i'm gonna you can explain now like your most vivid memory of your father is probably when this book came out of understand so basically because that was the most controversial that was like when i got a lot of heat for it and like i didn't know what the fuck was going on yeah it was just like the time where he was probably the most uh controversial he had this was like the year after uh playing so he still had money he was out in la he was getting into acting he was always like the playboy mansion writing his book and he was like very um controversial controversial but like still successful and so as soon as he wrote the book and the book came out i got a lot of um heat for it i guess his daughter and like heard a lot of weird terms and like very derogatory like well let's first explain yeah the book was basically and correct me if i'm wrong but he essentially came out and exploited the mlb for saying like a bunch of these guys are on steroids yeah and at first he got blackballed because everyone was like what are you talking about that's not true that's not true meanwhile ends up coming out that he was slowly um, but surely really telling the truth this is true right yeah all of them no but but all of (laughs) them yeah and so at first it was like oh you're a fucking snitch because you're coming Mm -hmm. out and but what you're revealing the truth and the dark side of what at that time the MLB yeah. was and the guys were testifying in court being like I have not I never have this and that like Mark McGuire all these people were just like I swear to God I've never done it and it's like but you, you are right. and then my dad was so bitter because he was the only one who my dad was obviously like not to like yeah go for it blow smoke up his ass right but, but he, yeah. he was like incredible at what he did he was right. very talented and you know I don't know the steroid era was like uh controversial in the sense of like did did they really work that hard right. like did it was it just steroids or whatever but he was great and he lost just like that his his passion yeah. and, it, and it was unfair that all these other players kept making money and kept getting to play um and he didn't when they were all doing the same thing when did he like why did he stop playing why did he retire so so he got blackballed in the sense that like no one offered him wow. a deal got like it. everyone um just kind of congregated and talked about the idea of like do we want to play with jose do we want jose to go on any of our teams he went from being like highly paid and like entertaining and one of the best players not a single offer no one would speak to him no one would talk to him mark mcguire his like bash brother boy like cut him off like everyone completely like blacklisted him from the mlb as a whole and i think it was obviously the organization right that was like no we're done with this josie can you walk me through your life when that Mm -hmm. book comes out yeah and you're now the daughter of a man that everyone in America is calling a snitch. And can you walk me through that? Like, was there bullying, et cetera? Yeah. Uh, I just like always, so obviously being Josie Canseco and having the name tied to me, like I just always heard about my dad, but he was never really around. Like okay. he tried to be, and he tried to be there. And he tried to be there for me. And like, this is when he was in LA and he was, you know, local. He lived in the Valley, I think in like Encino or something. And I'd see him here and there, but like, 
um, success and fame and money was always before me. And so wow. therefore, like, like I was a che- like, for example, like for, I was like, so I cheerleaded for a while, like competitive mm-hmm. cheering and, and he would like not show up to my competitions. And, I would, and everyone was like, oh, can Seiko's daughter, can Seiko's daughter. I'd be like, but where is he? Know. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and I know he tried his best, but like he just had a lot on his plate and right. maybe, you know, I think sometimes people have kids when they're not ready, yeah. ready or, you know, appropriate timing. So maybe that's part of it. Um. Do you remember anyone like specifically saying anything to you about when those like what would people say to you? They would just be like, I mean, anything that they could shoot at me for like your your dad's a fucking snitch, blah, blah. Fuck you and your family. At the time, my mom had also like maybe like a year after done Playboy. Which Hot was, like, it. back in its prime, like, right. did the cover, full nude, like, hot mm-hmm. as fuck, like, but for so many reasons, <laughs> I know, I'm like, go mom. Go mom. Um, but for so many reasons, people were like, yeah, you're fucking family, fuck this, fuck you, like, right. your dad's a snitch, like, your dad's, like, worthless, it's like, and we'd, I'd, like, be out in, in public with my dad, and people would, like, yell at him, like, people had the audacity, when we'd be, like, walking in, like, a movie theater, or whatever, I specifically remember a time we were walking into a movie theater, like, him and I together, because we'd had, like, daddy-daughter, like, right. dates or whatever, and... Or walking out and someone's like you fucking snitch and i'm like i literally just like at this time my dad wouldn't really educate me on much because i was so young right. but i knew like something was bad and i knew something wasn't wrong but i just like didn't know what so i was like why do these people hate my dad why is my dad like one of the most sought after spoken about kind of people right now but i just i was just young i didn't get it and i didn't get why i was getting hate for it either and then the older i got i just kind of like learned that is that's not a normal situation to have as a child that like you're walking into a movie theater and people are screaming at your dad yeah like I I can't even imagine what mentally that did to you and like psychologically because you were an only child right yeah only child no no siblings just my (laughs) Josie okay so like I was like just dealing with some family shit the other we or have been dealing with it and I am not publicly talking about right now but like I was thinking to I was saying to my brother I was like I have no fucking idea what I would do if I didn't have my siblings because I look back at really hard times in my childhood when like my dad works for the NHL and when I was younger the NHL like went on a big strike and so my dad lost his job and I remember like all my friends growing up were really wealthy and yeah. when my dad lost his job like I couldn't go to my parents and be like hey can I have that extra twenty dollars so I go to the yeah. mall and like there was there was a really hard time in my life where I was like watching my parents struggle but I would turn to my siblings and like yeah. talk about it with mm-hmm. them because that's all you have right technically is like people like family is like unconditional right and it's, it's trusting and loving so I but I'm like but that. you didn't have siblings so like who the fuck did you go to in those moments where you're like in California your dad's nowhere to be found and like your mom is your mom but it's your mom like mm-hmm. you didn't have siblings like who did you go to in dark times um you don't you know one no not really I just kind of like I, I think that kind of translates into why I have this like tough shell where I just like kind of don't give a fuck and I have no one to like shut off and detach and shit wow. it's because like I didn't really have anyone to go to and resort to and like my mom's upbringing with me is also a different story she was around but she was also kind of like my dad okay so I'm gonna kind of put him on blast like feel bad um <laughs> he just he never took care of us never paid child support never nothing my mom had no job no nothing and had to raise me single mom with like nothing so she was kind of um you know she was hustling too she had to she had to work she did playboy she ended up doing a reality show that was like successful as well um and she hustled but that means that she had to be absent as well a lot of the time Um, it's like you're just like alone so just so just just little (laughs) josie just me now i like i love it i appreciate it because that's obviously probably what i'm used to totally i just i mean i just i don't know i just I, I couldn't even tell you. I just... Did you yeah, ever... Friends, maybe? Like, yeah, I was going to say, like, do you look at your friends, like, with greater value? Like, either, like, your sisters? I'm such a... I'm such a loyal... Uh, ride or die for my friends like if I if I love you and that's reciprocated and the respect and loyalty is reciprocated I'll like die for you type right. shit like when I connect with someone because that's so important to me and it's so rare and because I don't mm. have brothers and sisters like that is priority is being an incredible people absolutely I mean, incredible person right. to the people who are there for you and love you and like now I have so many good fr- I mean actually not so many that's gap yeah, but I have a couple of really close people that I can go to for anything anytime anywhere and they're there for me yeah and I would like literally kill for them type shit my other question was because this is we're gonna get into the dating shit but I wanted to know <laughs> steroids are obviously a drug yeah. and I was wondering like were you able when you were younger and in your life to separate like 
your dad on when when that was the case versus like who basically like who he was like yeah. when he was on drugs versus not like or was it all one for you because like I feel like it must have been hard to differentiate at such a young age of like he just, why like, he was kept acting it all from me but I yeah. did so he had obviously steroids comes with like you know uh, mood swings exactly. a little bit and yeah. stuff like that and I definitely um <clears throat> excuse me um I definitely I definitely saw it and like I knew he was on steroids because obviously it was like public knowledge right. like, I'm still his daughter I still know what's going on I just don't know like to what extent exactly yeah um yeah, it was tough. He was he was he was moody and he was uh he was always in his head and he was bitter from you know, he was already had a reason to be upset and be bitter, much less right. uh yeah, he was just kinda like I just didn't know what the fuck steroids was. Like right. I didn't know exactly how much he was taking, like finding out that he was taking like way above the appropriate dose to get to a certain point of a certain build, you know. Right. You obviously also on top of that being public it was public that some of your dad's relationships were like volatile and intense yeah how did that affect you at a young age and like how has it affected you with men I guess like it's very that's a very public topic I know is probably very sensitive and we don't have to talk about it if you're no, not comfortable. No I'm, I'm just trying to make sure the way I um uh, obviously articulate it yeah. is is the way I, I mean and the, I'm tr- getting my point yeah. across properly because yep. no one's time. ever asked me that question. <laughs> yeah. And this is my second podcast. Um, Take your time. I think that having the kind of dad I did whether it was watching him with girlfriends with the cheating or the the you know I, I I don't know if he's ever you know laid a hand or done anything like these are things that I kind of like out of sight out of mind yeah don't I don't really talk about those kinds of things I just yep. don't know you yeah. know what I mean yep <clears throat> but um I think just seeing how he was as a partner made me have this bitter taste to men being like I will never be that girl that gets like played and like I just okay. kind of I, I move with a more of a masculine energy I think and I'm just like I don't know I'm just not gonna like stress about a fuck boy and like yeah be like just the way I treat them like I, I'll, I'll have a thing with a guy and I'll like be talking to them dating I won't even sleep with them and I'll just like you know we'll like talk and this and that we'll hang out and then done boom like, you can just move on over easy. it like all of a sudden one day things will just change and i'll just be like on to the next type shit that's but maybe that's from seeing my right. dad be like that and be such like a a fuck boy because you guy. saw like the inner workings from your of a dad man and how men feel i mean granted my dad's probably not a great example no but like oh, guys but yeah. that's, that was my example right you know i mean that was that was my father figure growing up so it definitely made me move in a more like cold kind of like do when you, I find that person, it's different, but... Do you think that... Do you get feedback from guys that you're, like, intimidating and kind of standoffish? Uh, yeah. You do? But not... I don't know if standoffish is the right word. I've definitely gone intimidating before, and I've, uh... A lot of guys have been like, wow, you're the girl version of me. Like, a lot of guys I've, like, I, hung out with or dated, they'll be like, wow, you're, like, literally me in girl form. And I'm like, I know. I know. <laughs> well, because you're going about it, I kind of... I... That's... I... Not that it's... I don't know if it's healthy or not, but I say I don't on know my if any of right that's just what it is hope for tell me yeah I think like I've said at times to women that are looking for advice on like there's so many guys that are playing me and I don't know what I'm doing wrong well, guys are like that guys yes. move the way like I yes. kind of move now they just like talk to a girl get her hopes up the girl gets feelings and then they bail like right. I'm on the other end of that yes. now and I'm like if you get feelings for me please please escort away. yourself out please yes. just don't call me like don't text me like I don't know I just also, when I fall for someone, or if I like really start liking someone, it has to be reciprocated because I'll never be the first one. Okay. To, like I'm never the needy one. I'm never the one that's like, oh, like calling you every day. Let's hang out, blah blah. Like I know, and it's not even a game. It's just kind of like how I am with dating. Like I love boys. I love dating. I think it's fun, but I'm never that girl that it's is gonna it chase first. one or like go out of my way to like really be with one or. Have you get ever told a guy first. you loved him first? Yes. <gasps> yes really because, yes um my my last relationship wow was uh, that hard for you to say that it was hard because the first time I said it he didn't say it back Fuck. yeah but he said it ended like a week later right right, like, right. but um what was that like it was I so it, it was in a point where I was comfortable enough to say it because I knew that we loved each other right. we were getting so close to a point where I was just like I know he like loves me and has love for me we're just it's just a scary thing to say yeah. especially I think for him it was just like you know a moment to, of a course. Hump to get over of course um 
and you took the jump no so when i said it and it didn't say it back i was just like ah that is a shit feeling i don't want to feel that ever again but i'm i'm honestly like the older i get the more i'm just like happy i'm just like down to express myself if i feel right. a certain way about you i'm gonna let you know i'd rather be an open book yeah than play games and like not to or you know what i mean like if i feel yeah. something I'm, i'll tell you I'm not I, afraid. I actually agree with you in the sense of like i would never say that I love someone first unless I knew it yeah. was going like I knew it we to had like a joke about it yeah, yeah okay yeah. so you weren't like out of nowhere the crazy girl Fuck that's like no. I love you and it's like I read the it. room <laughs> bitch like what is going on Some awareness don't say right. it now. okay so here we go you're a Scorpio I am I was like Indeed. literally reading up on Scorpios you have to tell me if this is true um I'm a very cliche Scorpio so we I've really learned. I think so yeah okay they said Scorpio women are universally known as the sex goddesses of zodiac <laughs> Josie oh my god <laughs> renowned for their passion their strong libidos and their exceptional prowls as lovers sex is extremely important to these women and sharing a sexual connection with their deeply bonded lover is necessary for them to feel completely fulfilled in life that I'm being sure. said Scorpios don't really love to sleep around, nor do they take sex casually. So until yeah. they find their soul match, a Scorpio can feel a little adrift without a partner. Is that true? Uh, yes. The first half a little bit. Okay. Also, like in the sleeping around sense as well. Like it takes. I ha- so I have a rule. Oh, minimum, tell us your rule. So minimum a month of of knowing someone, getting to know them, and like if I'm seeing someone or talking to someone, minimum a month to Love. two months, depending on like how close we get, how quickly before I end up sleeping with them or doing anything with them. Like yeah. the last couple of guys I've been talking to, I just like maybe kiss a couple of times, Love. never even like saw their penises or anything. I was like, um, okay. What I posted on my Instagram the other day, which I was dying because so many women were like relating to it. So I've I'm, heard that before. Have I've you? Th- yeah. So I've heard it. So typically, I think I saw a TikTok about it. It was like someone like public speaker, just like a TED talk type thing being like your first love is so do you want to say what okay it was yeah so we'll- <laughs> yeah yeah okay so i came up because i was looking for books i'm like i think it would be fascinating to ha- start reading books and then relating it into the podcast because we love to be educated yeah yeah of so <laughs> the book is called you only fall in love three times and apparently the three people is number one is the soulmate and the soulmate introduces us to is this the-, the first love yes okay. the first love it introduces us to the dream of love mm-hmm. but somehow what seemed like it would be happily ever after wasn't meant to last forever and it's yeah. like you're soulmate and Have they showed that. you I, what I love this, right so so and weird. isn't it crazy it, like pops I'm thinking right in. of the person yeah. just like mm. <laughs> yes yeah. and they just showed you like what love was then the next is we're so consumed with making the karmic love work that we often fail to question whether it even should work as painful as it is to accept this love that felt so right in the beginning is actually all wrong for you and so a lot of girls spot, like spot right on. On. Crazy. <laughs> i'm just like i'm applying it to my life because I've, I've had two people that i've been like in love truly with. head over heels in love with like would marry them type shit wow and so i'm like my third's next and like thinking about that i'm just like nervous yeah because the third <laughs> one house is, <laughs> no like, it's fuck. you're like where is he the third one guys is the twin flame it comes into our lives and often we don't even know it's love because dot 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 it's too easy this is the love who helps us to accept ourselves just as we are because this is precisely what they do everyone's like alex this is fucking call her daddy what are you doing right now no but i read this <laughs> and i was like oh my god and then josie dm'd me and was like oh my god i can already think of the two of them mm-hmm. so can you walk us through again we're not naming names but i think you kind of walking us through a relationship that you knew oh my god this person is like my soulmate i love this person and it didn't work out and how you walk away can you walk us through that like first love and kind of dissect just like some of the pros and cons and all the things because i think a lot of girls are like wait but if it's your soulmate what the fuck i know that's what you think and you work (coughs) <coughs> you work I promise it's not COVID I swear I just hit the puff last night stupid thing <laughs> you're fine um, you're fine yeah so my first relationship my first love like my first like real yeah. uh, love was four years and he was with this musician who was like always on the road always traveling always in the studio working touring whatever like kind of that that the musician life of like you know girls on the bus getting yeah. fucked up every night this and that um but we were so in love and so obsessed um and it was I think it was just kind of like it started off a little rocky. I think the trust wasn't always there because both of our jobs and what we did. We were young. I was 18. He was, like, 25, 26. Um, okay. And we just, like, were so in love, but, like, in a controlling way. Like, I just knew, like, we started off. We, like, formed bad habits that we didn't know how to break as the as we progressed more and more, like, years and years down the road. Um, and we would just, like, fight all the time. And, and what I learned also was, like, so we would party a lot because he Got was, it. like, kind of, like, a party boy. And that yep. was, like, his brand or whatever. And... 
and we'd travel the world together and party, but we would argue when we partied. And I think because the alcohol um, intensifies the emotions and the environment, the girls and throwing themselves at him, whatever it was, like, yeah. it was just, it was hard because we were so in love, but we were in one of the most like, toxic environments for what our love was and for right. what it needed. And we were also, like, young. I was learning. I was growing up. Yeah. Like, I had, you know, my, my coping mechanisms back there for, like, back then for heartbreak were a lot different. Like, if we, we were super on and off. So whenever we'd break up, I'd be like, well, I'm going to go out in L.A. and, like, do this and go to this guy's after party and be around these people and blah, blah, blah. Like, fuck you. Right. Type shit. Like, more spiteful and, like, toxic behavior. Absolutely. Because you're younger. And, like, exactly. I, that's what that's I would have done. I was just totally. like, fuck it. Totally. Um, and then we just kind of – so so my process with it was that we were together for four years. Um and we fought so much and just kind of couldn't – we tried to make it work so many times. We are just yeah. like, let's try this. Let's do this. Let's make it work. I love you enough. Like, let's just fucking do it. Eventually, I fell out of love. Like, eventually, I just kind of was like, I, it's not there for me anymore. Like, I, I kind of just fell out of love. Um, loved him to this day. Like, yeah. love him to death. Will always, like, want the best for him. Um, but passion-wise and, like, for me to, like, continue to be with someone, I just, it just wasn't there anymore. And, right. and even then, I tried to stay a little bit longer. I think we both did. And – because, you know, loyalty and love and totally. that unconditional, the idea of unconditional love and marriage is like you go through hard times. Like how do, how, how are people married for like 50, 60 years? Yeah. You think, and it's hard when you like, because ha- I'm sure every, I feel like every couple does, like you talked about probably marriage and babies and all the things. All like the you time. go there. I think there was a point where he was like about to like propose to me. Like we talked about like, we were like, we had promise rings and this and that. Like we were just like so in love, but so young and. Um, and yeah, and so we just kind of like, eventually one day, like something popped off and like, I, I remember like going on his phone and finding something that like really bothered me. And I was already like, I was already ready to go. I was like, one more thing happens. And like, I just see myself like having that switch and it's flipping and it's done. Right. And, um, and then, yeah, then that happened. And I just kind of was like. I got to go. One of us has to go. Right. This is bad. One of us has to go. And if one of us doesn't go, we're going to end up hating each other. And like, That's this can't, well, I have to think about myself and be right. selfish, f- selfish, finally. So when you talk about leaving, because that topic is, uh, there's so many fucking layers to that. The amount of people, women, men, I don't give a fuck who it is. When you make the decision to leave something that you were so in love with someone, there's history there, there's years there. Yeah. And that I think is a lot like people are, well, I just, well, that was four years of my life. I can't leave them. Mm-hmm. It's so hard to see like it's what so life hard. is going to be like without that person. Did you, were you the type of person that then went like, did you guys keep texting a little after the breakup? Like, how did you handle moving on? Because a lot of people write in being like, it's so fucking hard to go from being in bed with someone every day. They're your best friend. Yeah. You love them. <laughs> and then what? You're just not supposed to talk. It's literally like mourning yeah. the death. Like, how yeah. did you go? How did you go about it? So obviously I was a bit younger. My breakup, I, as soon as we broke up, I was just like, I, I tried to replace him. I tried to replace it. I was just kind of, like, dating. I started seeing someone. Like, I even got to a place where we were, like, exclusive kind of. Um, oh, right right away? Right away. Wow. I mean, not right away, but, like, right away. Okay. Like, pretty much. But also, like, keep in mind, I was already had been checked out of this relationship for, for like, maybe, bit. like, five, six months. Like, yeah. at least. And was just kind of, like, waiting to, like, f- us f- to finally separate. Um, and also, when I was younger, and maybe this stems back to, like, you know, not having a father figure always like my my one figure my one sense of stability within a man had just collapsed after four years someone I thought I was gonna spend my life with it all collapsed so I was like I need maybe it was another sense of like love from a from a guy or a man or just someone to like just make me there. feel yes a, like a, a, a male presence just to make me feel happy and good and complete and like when I was younger stemming back to like dad shit maybe I thought that that's what I needed right. and I've learned now that it's like so not so it's so within you it's need like, to be on your own for a minute exactly and go through that healing process um and we we definitely talked a bit yeah. we would it was more toxic and we would argue because he would hear like oh you're with this guy oh you're with right. that guy blah blah like what are you doing you fucking ho you thought yeah. this not you know what I mean like the fucking jealous the emotional whatever. yeah so we fought a lot but then there were times like you know where we would try and hang out a little bit but as much as we like, even like you know, um, not recently, but like we all up until my last relationship, we yeah. kind of were just like dabbling with the idea of making it work again, maybe mm-hmm. or hanging out. But every time we did, it just wasn't there for me. Yeah, it just wasn't it. It wasn't like that it's, fire wasn't yeah. there anymore. It's and like so. the soulmate that taught you what love is, but it's mm-hmm. not right. Yeah, I think totally. that's. I do think that's fascinating, Josie, because like now as you've gotten older, it's interesting because now you're almost like you were now in a relationship and now you're single. And instead of running to a new guy, 
your I mean sing. you're like please I'm not I'm wait. not <laughs> no, you're like Alex wait here. till you see TMZ this week I've got a new boyfriend I'm like fuck I'm dead. But no you, I am I'm, I'm being better about it like I'm not out here like sleeping with anyone I'm not yeah. you know I'm making it very clear that I'm a pretty emotionally unavailable in the sense of just like really wanting the best for myself and I want to focus yeah. and uh, so this is the way I look at it it just none of these people that I've been with ha- are my person you know yeah. what I mean like these it's just like long t- like when you think about all the details of it and you think about uh how it went down and you know the the whatever it was I it just it's just he's not my person he's not he's not he's not the guy that I'm meant to be with and I and I find closure in that in itself yeah. and acceptance and I'm just like that's cool. Like, so my dad right. taught me growing up because whenever I'd like be sad about a boy, like I had like a high school love that I was like thought I was in love, but it was like right. we were like 14, 15. Yeah. It wasn't real. And I was like distraught about it. I was just so upset. My dad's like, Josie, you're going to fall in love so many times. You're going to have so many like romances and boyfriends and relationships. Like, do not do this. And like to this day, that sticks with me. So when, I, when any, anytime anything falls apart, I'm just like, I'm good. I'm good. We're good. Whether yeah. I have someone or have myself, like, I love myself so much right now, and I'm so proud of myself for getting to this point of, you know, just completely supporting myself, being yeah. strong mentally, like, you know, being very independent and, you know, getting through those, uh, you know, unhealthy coping mechanisms that I used right. to have. I and think I'm that's, just like, good. No, that's interesting what your dad told you because it is so true, and I think it's so hard to tell people that until you experience it. Like, mm-hmm. I have been in love before, and I have a boyfriend right now, and, like, those people that I was in love with I at times right after maybe I would be like oh I regret that but like (coughs) you go through the motions right you're bitter yeah you miss them and then you're like fuck them and then you're like you're neutral and then you're like holy shit thank god that happened did you feel that like a pressure when you were younger because of the name that you had oh yeah I just yeah because I feel like a lot of the celebrity kids are um you know well off they have a safety net something to fall back onto if they don't want to like bust their ass and work um and that was never the case like when I first started modeling I was uh had like maybe a hundred dollars a week to spend in New York and and I was in model apartments where it's like six girls shoved into it's like three girls per bedroom we're all in twin beds and it's just like coexisting with all these other girls that don't even speak English or they like are smoking in the apartment like I had nothing and, Wait, and everyone don't... was like oh she's Canseco why doesn't she have this and that and I'm like because I don't have because I don't have it. that I don't have it I don't at all have that but I felt like I had to always make it seem like I was okay like I yeah. love to like not fake it till you make it but like fake it till you make it like put right. on a straight face and make it work and get a cute style on going to castings and stuff and play that, the part that's so crazy I didn't even think about that like you everyone has a per like an image that they think you are like you're yeah. rich yeah you're beautiful oh my gosh she's got like the greatest life and then you're saying like it actually was kind of the complete opposite in terms yeah, of completely. having yeah Hard. wait so you were in it with them and at what age um 17 18 and then uh, I would say by the time I was 19, I kind of, like, had enough of a clientele, was making enough money. I was actually making, like, pretty good bank. Like, the reason why I actually, like, gave up everything else started modeling is because it ended up being a full-time gig. Like, some of the right. first couple jobs I did were uh, massive, big deals, especially in, like, the fashion industry over in New York. Um, Wait, that's amazing. Yeah. No, so you finally started making money, and you're like, yeah. I'm going to stick with we this. We saw Faith, and I was just like, I just I worked and worked and worked, and I, and I stayed with it, and I adjusted to New York, and I just stuck through with the model apartments, and I was just like, I want it. I will be, I will admit, I wouldn't say now, but like prior to educating myself more on what models go through, I feel like a lot of people are probably like listening and they're like, okay, like you have so fucking easy, like you have a perfect body and you have like no imperfections. Can you explain a little bit though about like what really is the truth about a modeling career and like what it does take and and body image and what you go through on a day-to-day basis of trying to keep and maintain a certain yeah. image because I think people think it's so easy mm-hmm. and I'm going to assume I know, it's, there's that stigma that's like oh are you model like whatever but yeah. it's actually like and also it comes with also like don't you feel like people like oh you're not then you have no talent and it's like well yeah. uh, pe- like I think people think because I think maybe because the Instagram model has shifted now into it's all. like a blurred line of like what an actual model is but yes. I came up in the more traditional way that was just like the grind to get there and not having much uh was hard and it's yeah. definitely like for I'm, I also don't want to give like a sob story like me, me. no but yeah, tell us. um I can't remember the last time I looked in the mirror and was happy with how I looked 
because of because of the industry and the competitive nature, especially in New York City when all the girls are so fucking tiny. Tiny. And they go above and beyond to be that small. At least this is more traditionally back in the day when that was like what you had to be. Like right. you walk into an agency, they put a measuring tape around your waist, your bust and your hips, and if you don't have the right numbers, you're not getting it. You're not even meeting the directors of it, whatever. Like it was incredibly, incredibly strict. And that was hard for me because I was an athlete and I was a dancer, so I had like Athletic. more built. Naturally I'm just like a little bit not thicker, but like athletic. Yeah, athletic. muscular. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it just took like it. It really was a lot mentally in the sense of like what it does to you, and you know, you you get told no, 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 and then eventually it pays off when you hit that moment where it's like yes, and then I started right. walking for like Moschino and doing like bigger campaigns and stuff like that. Um, but to get told no so many times, it I can only imagine the dark you get place so people. Defeated. Yeah, yeah, and, and then, then in to New be York, like, well, what could I all fix? the girls are out doing like drugs right. and shit and partying it's so easy to get dragged into that life in new york especially in new york because all the guys like all the models can go wherever whenever same like in la you know totally. what I mean? if you're a hot girl you can do whatever the fuck you want um so when you get told no 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 and you start going into it then you start spiraling into that right. dark place it's like let me lose more weight let me try to like figure out how can i uh, bend the, the next weight thing because you're also so for castings for shows you're in a room and there's like 100 girls there and you've been there for like six hours waiting just to walk in a line for a casting director because of how important that show would be for your career it's just a show you're just walking it's not even a campaign you, you so shows also like you they don't pay shows pay like 500 dollars but shows are so important for the resume in the fashion world. And it's Body. just like walking for Gucci is like, they don't really pay, but it's like, you just walk for fucking Gucci. Right. You know what I right. Mean? Cause then it can get you a huge campaign. Exactly. It leads to bigger and better. Um, yeah, and you sit there, and you're, all, you're just sitting here, and, like, half the girls don't speak English. Like, you've never met anyone. There's hundreds of girls in the room, and you're just, like, and all of them are just, like, so perfect perfect and tiny in their walks. And you're just, like, I'm w- looking at these girls, and I'm picking myself to pieces, picking myself apart, looking at all these other girls and, like, their thigh gaps and, oh my and you know, fat on their stomach. They're, like, they have none. Like, right, right. The fat on their stomach. Where to go? <laughs> there is none. There's, there's not. Yeah, it's just, like. And what that does to you mentally, because you see the girls who get the part, and that's right. that girl, and you're like, "Fuck, is that is that what I need to do to book this role?" Because you want it so bad, like that feeling of booking a show or booking a campaign and getting that thing that you like were aiming for. It's just like a sport when you finally like totally. win the Super Bowl. It's like totally. you finally walk the BS show or something. But um, it's but it's such a dark spiral because it so is dark, because yeah. it's all based on what you look like. Like yeah. nobody gives a fuck about your personality. You could no. be the biggest fucking bitch. You could be a sweetheart. No, no one really cares. No one cares if you're educated. No totally. one. And that's where you I don't speak at all. all. You don't speak to anyone. You don't have a conversation. If you do, they think you're too friendly. So they're like, mm, next. Yeah, they you're want someone who's more like just mute. You. Yeah. And yeah. I remember that's when we before we started um, talking, Daddy Gang. I was talking to Josie, and I was like, I I watched you on YouTube, and I thought you were so articulate. And she was like, mm-hmm. Oh my gosh, thank you because. <laughs> I feel like you don't get really an opportunity to like use your like it, it's your brand is obviously more you're a model like mm-hmm. your pictures are perfect like you're amazing yeah. and then it's like to hear you speak it's so cool because you have so yeah, much more than just I always get nervous because I'm like kind of breaking out of that shell and being just being in LA now again and being part of people who are so public with their lives yeah. and you know being on YouTube or whatever it may be like I'm getting used to it but it makes me nervous especially with how accessible information is right with people and cancel culture like it's I get terrifying. nervous to like and god forbid if you don't have the the opinion of the majority then you're like shunned you know what I mean right. god forbid like even like politically like it's just it's just hectic and it's I just so hectic right now and stay out of it because I just try and stay in my own lane yeah and in person I'm like I'll definitely you know what I mean like talk about topics that I'm passionate about and, right like, get into a conversation I'm like pretty opinionated but online I just Publicly, don't think there's no. a point to like I get influencing people but I it's just it's hectic it's it there's is always something a response a tweet likes whatever it's just, like have you have you openly talked about dealing with depression and anxiety anxiety yes not necessarily depression because i mean i've, I've hit those points right. i've hit like really because i can be emotional i'm a little scorpio so like oh my I god in my feels yes. um love and i've hit those points but like i really really try so hard to not get to those points because i'm disappointed in myself uh just the things i'm i do the things i'm capable of when i am like in that dark place and I, I try and stay incredibly optimistic. You know, the glass is um, half full, right. half empty, and look at the bright side of things. And I've learned – it took a while to train your mind to be this way. Right. But I just, like, don't let shit get to me now. Well, I think you even acknowledging, like, you – when you go into that dark place, at least you recognizing, like, oh, fuck, I see where I can be 
taking myself and I don't yeah. like that version. I notice it when I see it happening and sometimes it, it happens and like Could I ask you and you can say no, but like when you were saying you you see like you recognize when you're like going down that dark path, like could you give us an example for anyone that may be like, "Oh, I do that too?" I just like it's hard to say like one example like one specific like it's just a domino effect of like me being hard on myself because I'm such a fucking critic on myself like I get so hard on myself like I'm saying like I can't remember the last time I looked in the mirror and was like satisfied with what I look like like that's not cool right that's not right so whenever I see myself having those thoughts I'm just like Joe's like you're good but it's just like a domino effect of like oh like like this is this is wrong and this is wrong and oh I gained this weight this week and oh my my skin's dry and whatever and spiraling and my family and then financially and what if I you know what I mean like yeah and then it spirals everything starts I just think like I have like a door for the most part I have a door and for the most part the door is closed to all things that are out of my control and things that will bring me down but sometimes the door is cracked because mentally whatever I'm going through whatever whether it be a breakup or family issues like that door opens up and I'm in a vulnerable place things fucking pour in naturally and it's out of my control and that's when my anxiety kind of like some days it's like crippling like I don't want to socialize like I've been super introverted lately too like really not I have been too I feel like Weird. I haven't been I'm just like because the pandemic anymore. I'm just like I was in a relationship but now I'm just like I by pain, yourself I kick it. I'm, yeah I just also like I'm just in a work mode like yeah I don't, do you focused. like being alone I love it. Yeah, I do too. I love it because I think like I am like a, you know only child alone, like not much family, whatever. Oh, that's true. But when I find that person, like I said, with like friends and stuff, I'm just like, oh, that's hey. I get like, what I'm you're just, saying. Like, yes. cuddly and more sweet and just you know. Like you're so good at being on your own, but you welcome having a partner or I, someone I, to I cherish up. having yeah. those connections with people. I think like love and relationships and loyalty is some of the most most beautiful things that you can bring to someone and get out of someone oh have you ever been in a situation where you're hooking just exclusive like not exclusively you're hooking up with someone but you don't know if they're hooking up with other people or no you're always yeah, yeah. <laughs> of course of course i mean well yeah 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 i have and because we don't really have the conversation and and this is the thing also like i'm never it takes a while for me to be the one to like bring it up yeah because i'm cool too like i'm cool with us doing our own thing but once the feelings grow and it's been like a couple months of us doing the same thing talking every day and like two three months comes along and like we haven't done anything about it then i'm like do you ever ask yeah no i've asked i've asked i've asked how do you ask um i was just like I'm trying to think exactly what I said. Because it's like, because girl, random. yeah, no, because it's like, I think it can really turn people off. Just like I've had guys ask me and then I'm more turned off. Like, yeah. it's, it's a weird, it's a weird annoying, question. Yeah. It's just kind of like, it's hard because if you're enjoying yourselves and then someone asks, but like, I get why they're asking and I've asked at some times, but it has to be, I don't know. It's hard. When, when did you ask? Well, it was, um, it was three months of talking to someone every single day. Uh, we were pretty public at the time also and but we had never had the like exclusivity conversation Mm -hmm. and so eventually I was just like yeah so um it was actually like Valentine's Day the next day and I was like didn't know if like he had a plan or what and we were together the night before and I was like yeah so um well what are we doing here like I would just like to know for my sake because I also like I think sometimes it's good to clarify what it is because god forbid like one person slips up or if I were to go do something hook up with someone else and then he's like well fuck you you did that bye like let's clarify it so it's healthy and not like a messy situation because always being in that middle area with like feelings but no label is always like oh absolutely get hectic and Um, how did it go not good good. (laughs) he uh he he was like this is all I have to give right now this is like this is this is it this is like I I, I can't do anymore and I disappeared from his life I just like ghosted full blown because I'm like that also yeah. like if, and, and the way he, uh, he went about it just kind of like rubbed me the wrong, wrong way. way and I'm also like it took so much in me to even ask that question and then to be yeah rejected and then and then I was just like fuck this like this is not what I'm doing I respect that I do think it's like if you. If you are, because I think a lot of times people get in a situation where they want to know, but even no matter what the answer, sometimes they're not going to walk. Yeah. So like yeah. if you're listening and you want to ask him like, hey, what is, what are we? And he's going to say, oh, I'm just not there right now. Well, what, 
know what you want when he gives you e- answer a yeah, or b because sometimes girls go into it and they're like what are we and he's like oh like i'm just chilling and she's like uh, okay okay yeah me too i'm just chilling too yeah. and then she's all upset <laughs> yeah, yeah, whatever you want. right okay, yeah all to- oh, right right yeah totally and then you go home and you're crying and it's like if you go into it i that's my one advice if you're gonna ever ask someone what we are no kind of like josie knew like if he gives you that answer you knew you were kind of gonna walk that is yeah, way more healthy eventually after, i mean after three months of time and and after like you know if you're like traveling with this person like we were like pretty much fucking like we yes. were doing it we were sleeping together fully yeah. like together and then when it comes down to him being like i don't want a relationship i was just like that's such a fuck boy thing that i'm not gonna put up with yeah i know i deserve something different i completely agree so i was just like yeah i'm good on all that and well, then he came back around because they always come back around. they always fucking especially <laughs> they always come back around dude. especially Every, all, of, all of them when you act like that when you're like okay like you, when you don't really right. care because i don't really care i'm not gonna stress over right. like Josie, how to tell if someone wants a relationship or just a hookup? The amount of women that write into this podcast and they're like, I cannot tell if he wants a relationship, if he wants a hookup. I feel like that question in itself gives you the answer. But like, let me know. You just it's it's just being like kind of it's hard Reading a for, room a little bit. You right? have to. This is the thing. You have to know guys. Yeah. You have to know how to play their game and you have to know how they move in order to kind of know when they want a relationship when they don't. But the thing is that some guys are just like, they'll like lead you into the, to thinking that that's what they want, which I've learned is just being upfront from the beginning. If you don't want it, that's not what you're looking for. Be honest about it. Do um, you, is that what you ask guys? Like, would you be upfront and ask a guy that? No, I'm the one who says it. I'll be like, like as of recently, like if I'm like dating oh, or this say. and that, I'm just like, I am not looking for a relationship. I suggest you don't get feelings. <laughs> I, is that mean? I don't mean why, to be mean. I'm just like... This is why you're on the show. <laughs> I love you. Thank you. This is why you're here, Josie. No, I, I do. Think I did not say that to their face. I'm just like, don't... I'm telling you right now, I'm not in a place where, like, oh, you're going to be safe with me. Like, Did you I'm, say that before you started dating your last ex-boyfriend or no? Uh... No, because I wasn't in that place. I'm right. I'm, I'm in this place because I'm fresh off a breakup, right. and I'm not looking to like replace yeah. it with anyone new. I'm just like on my own. Shit. Well, that I think but is before good to clarify. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I think a lot of girls will say that, but don't yeah. mean it, and that's a yeah, fucking issue when you're like, girls, I don't want I a relationship. And like my friend Lauren, she recently got out of a breakup, and she's been saying that to guys, and they don't believe her. They're like, oh yeah, sure, haha. Like you're gonna go fall in love, and she's like. I do not I'm want a relationship. That's, that's me right now. To a T. Right? To a T. And you're like, yeah. how do I make it so clear? And they think it's a game. Yes. They like want to go after you even more. They're like, oh, she's emotionally unavailable. She doesn't care. Watch me like make her fall in love. I'm like, I warned you. Right. <laughs> I'm right. really not the one to but fuck I, with. But I think that's good to be upfront about it. But I do think like if you're on the other end of it, you can't tell if someone wants to be in a relationship. And I do think that's kind of the answer. Like I feel like yeah, a guy you'll know. To, yeah. If someone wants to be with you, they will be with you. They'll show it within their actions, not just words. Um, and and I think and I think that you'll know. And if also it just has to be like reciprocated, like everything kind of has to come together as one. Right. And you'll feel that connection. Yeah. And typically, if you have a feeling like a red flag in your gut, or no, a red flag in your gut. Okay, there's a red flag in the gut. <laughs> there's a no. red flag in my gut. I get I get what you're saying. You know what I'm saying? There's a red flag. You should just like, you know, be aware of those and be aware of what guys are capable of. Like emotionally, they, yeah. they work differently than we do. And just kind of um, just don't prioritize it. Like, let it yeah. happen organically and don't be like, oh, does he want it? Does he want it? Like, just play it cool. So be that true. cool girl. Like, don't be too needy. Don't be too up his ass. Like, let him focus on his work and let him come to you. Right. You know? And you do the same. Like, exactly. go focus on your be shit. Be that independent boss bitch who, like, doesn't, yeah. isn't looking for a man. But if the right, if the cards, are, you know, are played properly and it happens, then. Because don't, so I feel like when, when you feel yourself chasing around someone and being more in their shit, it's like, pause and be like, you need need to be so up your own asshole that you don't have time to be up someone Dead else's ass. and like Especially at go this do age shit, too. right like so we have so much work to do and so much like because if so you much growth yes. like internal personal growth yes like ladies if you're listening to this like and you find yourself constantly wondering if what he wants then you're not focusing enough on other yeah. shit why you do you have enough time clear. to even if question he doesn't make that. it clear that's probably not the guy you want to be with regardless exactly. if he wants to be with you he's gonna be with you if he wants to call you and see you and talk to you he's gonna call you like totally. it's not it's not that hard you I know agree Josie. There you have it. <laughs> what is what is next for you? You're going to shoot um in Mexico right Yes, now? I'm going to Mexico on uh, what day is it? It's on Sunday. I'm going to Mexico okay. on Sunday for the week to shoot this cover that I can't say what it is, but Congrats. I'm really excited about it. That's yeah, I'm amazing. excited. Also, just like a little Mexico trip. And you're single right now. I am single. Very single. Like really just focus on me. Focus How long on do work. we think that's gonna last? 
uh, a while, I think. You do? I mean, I think. I don't know. It, it, it's kind of hard to tell. I just don't Unless have you find that to, twin flame. I've had people, you know, since my last relationship that I've, like, really cared for and really gotten really close with. Oh, wow. Um, but, I, like I said, I'm just, like, I can't give myself up to a partner the yeah. way I'd like to right now. Like, I have so much personal growth to go through and I have so much I want to accomplish and I find myself being way more uh focused and motivated without a partner like getting my shit done and like sometimes you get comfortable in a relationship and you you know kind of just like you're like oh I have this safety net of this love and this person you don't really crush it as much as you should be crushing it and I agree so yeah I'm single I'm single for a while she's single tomorrow I'm like I'm in a relationship maybe change the podcast (laughs) (laughs) Josie thank you so much for coming on telling us your story you're amazing thank Thank you thank you